to actually just just do that be you mm. there's no one better than you and i know that's like another cliche thing or whatever but really you were given specific gifts from god from the universe that you need to hone in on those because there's something special there for you and this is another cliche thing and whatever you love to do really is your gift mm. it is what you're supposed to be doing welcome back to the own your awkward podcast I'm your host, Andy Vargo, and every episode we get into what has made our guests vulnerable and how they've learned how to own their awkward in order to live their best life. Stay tuned so you can hear every awkward moment in today's show. Hey friends, welcome back. We are about to get awkward. It's another episode of the Own Your Awkward podcast, and I am super excited today to have someone who I've recently met in the last year who brings so much light and energy to the world and so many good things. Martin A. Emmons. Martin A., welcome. Thank you so much for having me. If anybody's awkward, it's me. <laughs> I love it. Well, then you are in the right place. Awesome. So, we're going to ask about your awkward in a minute, and I'm going to put you on the spot about a couple things before that. But before that, I'd love to just have you share a little bit about what you do in the world. I know you're doing so many great things. I'm looking forward to working with you soon in the coach Yay. capacity uh, where Mar I'm going to work with Martinet. She coaches people that I could use some help on myself. We'll get into that later, but love to hear you share. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I am um, privileged and honored um, that I, I've been training since 2014. And I mean, I, I, I started training in 2014, but I've been a transformational life coach since then, master life coach. I mentor new coaches. And the biggest thing that I'm doing recently, because my master coach right before COVID, or maybe it was about a year before COVID, asked me to find him a TEDx talk. He was writing a book and he knew it was time to start getting it out there. And he asked me to find him a talk. I had no idea what I was doing, um, but I but being a paralegal in the corporate world for since I was about 22 years old, a long time ago, um, it, it was pretty easy for me to kind of get the the groove of it. And I love research. I love research. Yeah. So yeah, I, I found all the ins and outs of getting talks. I got him three talks in two and a half months. One of them didn't happen because COVID hit, but oh, they were too good. Yeah, and he did a sensational job. And ever since then, I just kind of like, God, I really like this. You know, I want to do this more. So other people that I work for, because I I, I have done some, um, when I was a paralegal, I was also an executive assistant. And I, I took some of that work home in 2012. So that has helped fund all my learning as a coach sure. and all the stuff I do. So I started getting TED Talks for the people that I work for. Oh, oh my God. This is cool. You know, this is fun. And then I heard of somebody that she ended up paying a lot of money for a talk. And it's been two years and she still doesn't have one. Mm. And I thought, oh, I've got something here. I enjoy this. Yeah. I am I'm good at it as a coach. And I will, I think part of what makes me special in this arena is that I truly care about people and I will do what it takes to get you on that stage. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's the difference. And and I just I love it. I love lifting people up. I love encouraging them. And there's nothing better. Well, and this is one thing that is just so key to what you said there is how much you love doing it because mm -hmm. you have to enjoy it. And <clears throat> excuse me, not everybody loves doing the research, getting the, you know, chasing the thing and, and pinning it down. And so you, you have to have someone who loves to do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's a lot of work. It's hard to find the people who are putting on the talks. They're busy people. Right. You know? Sometimes they don't even have a social media presence. So trying to track them down at their work or whatever it is, it's a right. lot of work. Yeah. And a lot of times the the skill set for the person getting on stage is not the research, the, you know, nailing it down, the tracking down the person that that's, mm -hmm. they don't, a lot of times like, I don't, I don't like that part of Yeah. So. Yeah. You just want to give your talk. You've right. got a message inside you. You want to put it out there. You don't want all the ins and outs and all the work of tracking these people down and all that good stuff. So, yeah. and I'm also, um, when we work together, I will keep you accountable to everything and every fear that comes up, we'll work on. Oh, you know? no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a good coach does though. That's what you're there. Yeah, I will keep you accountable and every, you know, there you're going to have auditions, you're going to have um, rehearsals, all that. And I will keep you going and motivated the whole time. I love that. Well, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to working with you and everybody listening. 
I know that there are so many of you out there who listen because I talk to you that you have a message inside and, so, and you may already be getting it on smaller stages, but it's time to get it on the world stage. So that's what Martin I've got. <laughs> right. Well, Martin, what would you say right now? You know, I, I hate getting caught up in the negative and we see so much negative out there. So I, right. I find out from my guests because they're from all over doing all sorts of stuff. What is the best thing you see going on right now or the most positive thing out there? Um, I guess what I would say is the most positive thing is it doesn't seem like there's a lot of change going on, but I feel like there is, at least with our younger people. Mm -hmm. I feel like they really want things to be different. They're afraid in a lot of ways. Like I, I know that even my own children are a little bit afraid of having have kids of their own. Mm hmm you know, because to bring into a world where there's so much chaos, but at the same time, they are really wanting to get in there and to fix that, wow. to change that, to have love, diversity, to have um, inclusion, to have just love to be, you know, right. the, the basis of our world, lifting each other up, encouraging each other. And so many young people, uh, their friends, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's going to happen. I do feel like we can make a change, especially with our young people today. And those of us like you and me that really believe that the world can change, we start taking action. We keep getting out there, whether it's on a stage or whatever else, and sharing messages of hope. My radio show is about hope. Um, I think change can happen. I, I really do. I think that is beautiful. And I love that you point out to just from the very beginning that we might not always see it or we might not feel like it's happening, but it's there. Yeah. It's like it growing is. underneath where the roots are growing. Mm -hmm. Yep. We got to water plant. We got to keep planting the seeds and watering them. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing we have to do the work, right? We can't just mm -hmm. say, ah, it should be different. And then be mad that it didn't change or that something isn't different when we haven't done the work or contributed. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's a person in my life right now that complains about it all the time. But he's, Oh, well, <laughs> oh well and there just are those people sometimes yeah. and and I think sometimes we might have times in our lives where we're that person based on you know what else we have to focus on or what else is going on or how mm -hmm. we've been affected by things but we get yeah. to a point where you know whether it's I, I like to say sometimes we get once you're afraid that things aren't going to change enough that you aren't afraid of making the change then right. it becomes motivating or that something else moves you in a way where you just see this light and you say, oh, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. I think the more we take action, right? Right. The more we take action is that that's when you start to see changes happen. That's when people come in your life that can help you make a difference. Right. You know? So how do you, how do you take action like on the days where you're just, ah, I just don't even know where to go or what action is going to help. Like this problem seems so big. Do you have any thoughts on, a good first step? Well, for me, it's getting outside, you know, um, whether it's going to start changing your area, my area, you know, Seattle right. has as much, well, not as much as snow as I get, but it gets cold. Right. Um, to me, it's nature and always trying to find something. Um, I will be vulnerable enough to say that my life is very hard right now. Um, but the fact I get outside and I look around and I take in nature. There's a there's a section of my, my very busy area that we live in, but there's a section, a, a street I can walk up where there's just deer everywhere. Oh, everywhere. Oh, so I, I just kind of like to watch them and sometimes just see how close I can get to them. You know, it's just like miracles. Right. Or flowers, different beautiful things. And just, it's, it's very cliche. A lot of people say that, but really, if you can step into gratitude, it does change everything. You can find joy even in the midst of crap, you know, right. you can. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I really appreciate you being vulnerable and saying, Hey, life's hard right now. This is, you know, I show up looking great and feeling like, Hey, <clears throat> we're going to have this conversation, but we, we see people out there and we see them and we a lot of times too often judge that if they look good or they have a smile on their face or they're doing the things, they yeah. must have a great life and they must not hard, have the hardships that I have. And I think it's so important that you call that out that, look, I'm still doing the things, I'm putting in the work, I'm getting dressed for work and I'm showing up even though things are hard. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it helps, you know, there are, there are times where I will definitely, I'll sit in it. Mm -hmm. You know, our feelings have something to teach us. Our merchants, merchants have something to teach us. Right. However, sometimes 
you know, I need to get out of this. <laughs> right. I gotta get the car out of at a park and go for yeah. a while <laughs> and then, you know, take a break from this. But also just just more even um there was somebody in my life for a while, he always said that when he was really down, he would go to a nursing home and just oh. let like some of the older people, you know, like, oh, Jimmy, my son, you know, and yeah, it's not his son, but they think he is. And he brought joy to somebody's wow. life. So he, yeah. he, I think he still does that. There's always something we can do to, you know, just pull ourselves out of that, help somebody else, even when we're feeling like not, you know, it's really, really rough. And like you just said too, that, you know, we can show up dressed nice and everything else. And we never know what's going on inside somebody else. It's right. just kind of pulling up our, pulling ourselves up, pull it, putting ourselves together and going out there anyway, because we have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot, I got to a point where I would see people who, you know, drive the nice car, they have the life that looks put together. And I finally got to a point where I just would tell myself, I assume they have struggles that I don't see. Yeah, absolutely. And not that, not that people can't have great lives. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that what you see, you're painting this picture of, oh, well, that must be life and that must be great for them. But I don't know any of the behind the scenes stuff. I don't know how insecure they are in their own head, what medical things might be going on, what scary thing just happened this morning. Or, you know, you, there's so there's so many dynamics that are not visible. Yep. Oh, yeah. One of my mentors, she kind of does this exercise. She takes, I, I want to say it's oil. Pull it, puts oil in a in a jar, maybe like fills it up about halfway, and then she puts soda in it. Mm. It doesn't mix at all anymore, like right. water, mix, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then after that, kind of fills up a bit and starts to overflow. She puts a bunch of glitter on top of it, and that's overflowing. It's like, you know, the oil is kind of like where we start as young people before all the crap's put on top of us, right? Oh, right. And then the soda comes in, and this is all the things that are put on, like, you know, you're not worth anything, or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you've been told from parents, whatever you've been told by, you know, one of the kids at school, or whatever. And then you still try to, you know, dress it up pretty, put the glitter on, put okay. the makeup on, do whatever it is. And, and there's still, we still have all these messes. Right. You know, but there there is help we can work through those things and um and 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 life's still going to happen you know we're, we're like a continuous work in progress we're just a little bit better off when 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 we when we work on ourselves when we do the work when we stay in action okay. but life is never it's never perfect that's know? true yeah and it just it's all i hate to say it's all in our head but you know what where we go with it how we perceive it mm -hmm. what we allow it to to do with our thoughts is, is yeah. that is inside our own control to a degree. Yeah, for sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. We got to get awkward. Martin A. No, that's no problem for me. It can be awkward. <laughs> Perfect. What is your awkward thing that you've had to just own in order to get to where you are today? God, I got, I, I would say probably a list, but um, I've always been, I think someone who kind of on the outside you know, I can be as, as I've gotten, you know, I'm 50 years old. It's like, I, I've gotten more, um, comfortable with the awkward. Like mm -hmm. I'm a complete introvert, but being in the public, like I am, you know, I'm getting people Ted talks, I'm coaching, I'm online a lot. I'm on these large platforms. Yeah. I have to put myself out there. You know, I've got to do this, but I'm always awkward doing it. Mm. I'm awkward. I was, um, just, you know, nervous, even though you and I are friends, it's still like a, it, it's, I just feel awkward. I feel like I'm not going to have anything to do or say or whatever. Um, I've always been um, I, I, like somebody like in school, I was always the person that was last picked for any type of sports, always the little awkward shy girl that's in the corner over there. Um, yeah, I just feel like I've never really fit in. So that's my awkward. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say that was me. I was a. I hated the lineup on the fence. I'm like, please don't. Like, I don't want to stand here through the whole picking process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now I'm curious because you know you said that you've always been this in that role kind of, mm -hmm. and that always makes me wonder because when we grow up in a situation and when we're raised through a feeling that's just part of us, mm -hmm. is there was there a point where you noticed that it was different than others or where it made a difference where you're like, Oh, now I'm self-conscious about this side of me. Mm. Gosh, I, I don't, I, I was like, it, if I were to pull up some pictures from about like maybe five years old and under, you can mm. see I was a kid, 
you know, just yeah. super long hair, braids often. Um, and, and you could tell like there was a confidence there, but there, a lot of things happened to me that broke that. Okay. Um, but it, yeah, it just like, I, I didn't feel worthy or, um, mm -hmm. I guess noticed okay. to, yeah. um, be my true self. So I think that just, just naturally made me awkward. Yeah. Does that answer that? Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. Did you have ways that you would cope where you would, you know, cause it's like when they're doing the picking on the playground, you can't necessarily go hide in the cafeteria or, you know, did you have ways that you got through those moments? I think I was just trying to tell myself it just doesn't matter. You know, yeah. I don't really belong and this isn't my tribe. You know, I wouldn't oh. have known those words then. Right. Tribe. Yeah. But um, these aren't my people. Yeah. I think I that's the thing how you could have the feeling, like yeah. even though you can't put words to it till later, yeah. but you, you know, with the intuition. Mm -hmm. Yep. There was a lot of people, even I, th I think middle school is worse than high school. And I remember, um, like the girls, the popular girls, you know, trying like, I remember one particular time where this girl wrote me this, this note, like, oh, Mitch really likes you. Do you like him? I knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. I fully knew what they were doing, wanting to make me feel bad. Oh, you know, kind of. Kind of set you up. Yep. And I'm like, nope. And then I'm like, oh, come on, you can tell me no. Oh, Mitch, she doesn't like you. And then, but they made fun of that. And he's like, oh, you know. Yeah, no matter <laughs> what, they're going to turn me. it. Right? Yeah, that, that is true. But at the same time, it's like, I didn't give them the satisfaction of making it worse. I knew, and I knew these were people. I don't want anything to do with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are not me. I don't want to pick on people. Right. I mean, why would I want to be a part of that group anyway? Yeah. That's so good that you knew that as a young yeah, I'm lucky. Adult and because uh, a lot of times we don't. We, you know, I think more often than not, the problems we make are from developing the wrong relationships in our lives or wanting to be included in something that isn't mm -hmm. right for us. Right. So, yeah. how did that change? Like, did you find, like, how'd you find your people? Like, I, I know, I feel like I've gone a lifetime and just, you know, recently it's like, oh, these are my folks. And, Early yeah. on, it's like, you know, it took me decades. Well, I would say it did me too. It's like, I knew these people were wrong, but I was so painfully shy at that time. I I didn't really reach out to people, right. you know? Um, I did have one young woman in, um, actually a couple in high school that were just amazing people. I'll never forget them just for, oh. you know, being there for me, you know? Right. Um, and, and they were, one wasn't so popular, the other one was very much so, but they were very good to me. I remember that. And then when I moved out, I, I moved out of, I moved out of my home at 17 years old mm -hmm. and I got a boss that I want to say, was I probably 22? Yeah. I just finished paralegal school at that point. And, um, I got a boss that he was weird. I mean, kind of weird. He, um, would, we'd start our day with meditation. Oh. We would often go to lunch, lunch where we'd go to met metaphysical bookstores afterwards, just kind of okay. bum around. So mm -hmm. I started learning about metaphysics. I started learning about myself and the stuff that I'd been through. Mm -hmm. And I started just connecting with people then. And from then that has developed. And then um, after my marriage broke up, I um, met my now husband after three years of being a single parent. And I moved here and that, that I found coaching after that, you know, after I was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer in um, 2014, shortly after my mom passed away. Wow. And, um, and I, and I thought, wow, I, I really got to do something here. My life is going to be, I mean, I knew I beat it, but at the same time I thought, well, you know what? I got to do what I want to do on my life, which is help people. Didn't know what that looked like exactly. Decided yeah. to become a health coach, got my first certification. And then after that, that's where it built. And this is where I found my tribe. So it's really been since 2012, 20 on up. Yeah. That I really built built a team of people that I would never want to be without. Wow. That's amazing. How about, yeah. How about you? How did you find people that well that was I was very isolated while I was married in my in my divorce? It was very much a, you know, just come home and hang out with the family and don't have friends outside of the marriage and right some work friends, but that was it. And those would come and go. And it was a very lonely situation as, as much as, you know, I love my kids, loved a lot of aspects of family life, but it wasn't a healthy 
partnership relationship with my spouse. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when I got divorced, I, uh, my friends who I like went to high school with where I had some friends, they actually, they call it uh, the time where I was like, you know, gone your time away or your time on the dark side of the moon. Cause it was like, I was, yeah. wasn't on social media. I wasn't around. You couldn't have found me online if you tried. And I had some friends who told me they tried to find me. And so for, you know, 23, 25 years, I was not connected with anybody mm -hmm. um, other than just, you know, going to the obligated family things here yeah. and there. Um, and when I got divorced, I just knew as the divorce was starting, I was like, everything's going to change in my life. This is not mm -hmm. the person I'm meant to be or want to be. Mm -hmm. And I purposely started being very purposeful in reconnecting with people and connecting with new people from different walks of life, from different hobbies I was doing from different experiences just meeting people just sitting next to somebody in a coffee shop like why are you here oh great we end up having a few things in common and now we end up having coffee a few times a week or you know I, I have friends from every age range every walk of life and it's been because of very purposeful design and I, I remember having this thought of writing a book called the invention of a man or reinventing a life or something like that because it's that's how I felt I was piecing things back together but I heard something recently because I always had this sense of loss that I didn't have this group that I hung out with from middle school through high school through whatever. And I think that that's, you know, what we see. And there's some people that may, might have a bit of that, but the majority of people don't really find their groove until they're in their forties and fifties because yeah. we've needed that life experience. Yeah. So when I read that, it was very freeing. I was like, Oh, I'm not so far off after, which is crazy because even though I'm always talking about not trying to fit in and just be yourself and be different, there's still that longing to be like, okay, I'm normal. <laughs> you know? Right. Absolutely. I, I do get it. I still want to belong, but in the right, with the right people, I guess. I exactly. Just... And that's, that's mm -hmm. such an important way to look at it too, because belonging doesn't mean popularity or mm -hmm. belonging with a specific thing. Belonging means finding where you belong. Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's not the same for all of us. So. <laughs> no, it's not. Mm -hmm. So how has that affected life since you have since, you know, owned it, you found your tribe, mm -hmm. you know, you, you say you love what you're doing. You, I can see you radiating when you talk about it. It seems mm -hmm. like it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Life. It, it's, I always know there's someone there to talk to when I'm just like, okay, I need some, I need, I need somebody. Right. Um, the, the, I may not be able to get exactly who I want on that particular day, but <laughs> right. there's, there's a whole bunch of people that, that got me, you know, and yeah. I've got them. And um, yeah, it, it, it's just a sense of, um, well, like, well, like one of my mentors told me a while ago, and, and Les Brown says this, like, sometimes you gotta have somebody believe in you when you don't yeah. until you do. And most days I, I, I like me. And then sometimes it's just like something will happen. Like there's a situation going on in my life right now. Kind of like, Oh man, if I would have done this better, if I would have done that better, and right. I know I can't fix any of that, mm -hmm. but someone can tell me and point out like, yeah, but look what you've done since then. And look at these other things. Right. You know, we need to be able to do that for each other. Yeah. I think that's a really tough one. I, I, have things like that sometimes I feel like we might be in a very similar timeline right now because <laughs> I have those moments where it's like oh man I really messed this up yeah and because we have the idealized picture of who we want to be and who we're aspiring to and and the actions that we are taking that are in line with that and then when we don't do that we go to oh man that's awful I'm an awful person or I should you know this isn't this isn't me and, and but we don't say this isn't me we 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 look at like I can't believe I did that or whatever yet we forget how 80%, 90% of our actions, 99% of our actions may have been right on the money and so helpful. Right. Right. And, you know, sometimes it's just, at least with me, sometimes it's like, Oh, am I here again? Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I solved all this. Yeah. And yeah. Here I am again, getting another reminder, another brick mm -hmm. dumped on my stubborn head. I mean, yeah. sometimes yeah, we've got to come back until, I don't know, certain things are healed or maybe there's a lesson for somebody else in it. Maybe, yeah. It's from from us. I, I saw this quote one time, which was 
very freeing, but kind of sad at the same time. It says something along the lines of don't forget that you, you can always be the villain in someone else's fairy tale. Oh, you might be a hero on one, but based on where we were in life. And I think about that with people from my past where it's like, I wasn't the good guy in that story. (laughs) Right. You know, from their perspective, and I might have been doing what seemed right from my marching orders, but yeah, yeah, so yeah, mm. so I try not to think too much about how many times I am in somebody's story, but but it just it gives you that freeing of that all of our stories don't line up, and you just have to be the hero as much as you can, and and for the people yeah. that are in your tribe, yeah, you know, do the best we can every day with what we got. Yeah, you now one thing that mm-hmm. I. I have, um, I, I always have a hard time like struggling, like with when you're there, when you make it, you know, mm-hmm. like, and, and I wonder, was there a point where you were able to say, wow, I, I do have my tribe, you know, like I, I had a person here or there, but now I really can say there are people here for me. Oh yeah. Um, that it was, I would say 2017 for me, you know, 2012 to 2017, I was definitely finding my tribe and getting in there and um, meeting like-minded people that want to do good in this world. Um, but when I started really getting my, you know, certifications in NLP, that's when, that's when, God, I just met people that I, I wanted my life to be similar to theirs. I don't want their lives, but similar. Right. A lot of what they were doing was like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they weren't handed these things. They did the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And, you know, like they say, have someone, um, you know, uh, follow somebody who has been where you are or, you know, ask for mentorship, whatever it is. And, and yeah, some of these people, I I just, I can't imagine doing life without them. So when you are building that, that group that you're with, have you, did you, was it easy, like, just to say, hey, will you mentor me? Will you show me? Because I know that's something I've struggled with is the hardest words for me to say is, will you help me? Can I have help? I need help. And, but as soon as I've been able to do that or accept help, uh, things have blossomed. And I wish that I would have said it sooner. You know, I, what changed for me um, really is I've always been very stubborn, very independent, do it on my own kind of thing, Mm -hmm. always helping someone else, but not taking it. When I got sick, I needed help. Uh My kids were really young. And we lived at this time in a kind of a really r- rural area and school was, yeah, almost a half hour away. And when I was doing my chemo treatments, there's no way I could take my kids to school. Yeah. And I had people even driving like from town all the way out to our area, picking up my kids, taking them, wow. um, people taking me to my chemo treatments. So my husband was working, mm-hmm. um, that's when I, and, and I was told, you know, gosh, I just, oh, thank you so much. You know, I, I knew I needed to do accept it. And then one person told me, she's like, but it's a gift to us. You've mm-hmm. always done this. Why would you not accept a gift? Why would you not give someone else that gift of helping you? Wow. I would encourage you to look at it that way as well. These yeah. people, most people that would mentor you because of what you want to do and the person that you are, mm-hmm. it's a blessing to them to mentor wow. you. That's a great way to look at it. (laughs) Yeah. And you're going to do it. You already do. Yeah. That's, that's fair. That's a good, because there's, um, I I was listening to this. It's actually a book about marketing, but they Mm -hmm. they did an experiment where they had people measure the worth of a favor Mm -hmm. and the value changes, whether you are giving a favor or receiving a favor. And a lot of times the further away from when the favor happens, it shifts on who values it more. Mm -hmm. it's it's interesting because you know as and that the same with help like oh this this seems like a huge ask for me to ask for someone just mm-hmm. for advice or a ride or whatever it is and yet they're like I have a car it's not a big deal I'm free that time of day this yeah. is no deal mm-hmm. and so uh, I think it really comes down to that re- staying grateful too uh, from both sides like I'm grateful that I am able to help people yep. and that that people are willing and able to help as well. So. Yep. Yeah. I even had before that, um, when I first moved here, it was hard for me to find work, you know, as a paralegal, which is what I was looking for at the time. And, um, this one woman to a church that we attended and she's like, Oh, you know, let's go to lunch. I'll take you to lunch. Why well, do you don't need to do that? Why did you take, why would you take that gift away from me? 
Mm. That was another like reiteration of that or actually before yeah. the other one. Like, oh yeah. Cause yeah. I don't want people like, you know, cause even now sometimes I'll go to lunch with friends or something and, and I'll, I'll get the tab, you know, and I'm like, oh, you don't need to do that. But, but I want to, I wouldn't even, you know, right. say it. So don't take that from me. Yeah. So now I'm throwing it back at people. I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And, and that is the thing I, I used to think when I was younger that you get to a certain point in life and then you're set, right? Like this is, yeah. I get to a certain, whether it's income level or whatever's yeah. going on in your life. And I've come to realize that those times come and go. And there's times mm -hmm. where I can be the guy buying lunch mm -hmm. <laughs> and other times where I'm like, oh, it's a tight week. <laughs> yes, so you fully, just, fully. You just gotta write it out. Yeah. yeah. So how has, you know, you've been, you mentioned that, you were that kid that was a little introverted kind of coming from the outside. And now you've come into finding your tribe. Mm -hmm. How would you say that that past life experience that you had being the shy kid, being, you know, in a small group or not even in a group, mm -hmm. how has that affected your ability to just rock what you're doing now? I feel like I'm relatable. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I am somebody who, um, uh, I, I can, I can just, I, I'm good at seeing people like, mm. um, I can see, or they can see, um, that they're not alone by the stories that I share, um, whether it's bullying, whether it's a kid that's been, you know, abused, whether that I, I am somebody who I know and I can relate and, um, I can empathize. I mean, um, yeah, I, I'm just a relatable person. I'm not somebody who, you know, um, what you, what you, what, what's the opposite of, of um, vulnerable or whatever? Like, I'm talking like perfection. Oh, there, there's no perfection yeah, here. <laughs> yeah, you're not putting up the walls and the false. No, yeah, I am as real as you get. I'm authentic. Um, I don't have any problem sharing any of my stories, yeah. uh, especially if it's going to help somebody. Yeah, I love that. I think it's, there are so many, there are so many, stories or movies or shows that we watch or books that we read about coming of age or childhood and yeah. each of us can read those same books and relate to a completely different character absolutely and so what I hear you saying is like how much you know you were one of those characters in those books or shows and people out there don't realize there's a character like them or someone who has that experience like wait no I hear you I see you mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's one of the best things we can do for somebody, mm -hmm. you know, that they're not alone and they're going to get through it too. Yeah, yeah. What is, what has been your bit, biggest satisfaction of making these changes in life to go from, you know, paralegal corporate world to helping mm -hmm. people? It, it's a, it's very fulfilling. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I guess the best thing I could say, it's very fulfilling. Um, my job as a, as a paralegal, because I worked in uh, ta uh, tax, corporate, and estate planning. The estate planning I really liked mm -hmm. because this was people's lives. Right. Yeah. You're, you're helping people in a, a different way, very financial. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The tax and corporate part, eh, kind of boring anyway, but actually <laughs> meeting the, the families and, and hearing about their goals and stories, I found that, that to be pretty cool. I yeah. like that. Yeah, but um, this there's just nothing like it. When when you're coaching a client through a really tough time, or you know, um, people say this a lot. Limiting beliefs, limiting beliefs, is such a big thing. You know, like kind of a buzzword or whatever. Okay. We have limiting beliefs, but it is something that just stops you when you don't believe in yourself. You know that you're worthy of the things you desire to actually do different tricks and tools that I've got in my toolbox here that people are like, Oh, wow. Okay. That's why I've been afraid of this or, you know, whatever. It's just so cool to see that. Yeah. So cool. There's nothing better. It, to me, it, it's life changing. It boosts up my day, spending mm -hmm. time with you right now, boosts up my day, you know? Yeah. Just, just personal development and, and helping lift somebody up. There's just nothing better. Do you remember the first time I'm sure you do, but do you remember the first time you were with a client early on and you said something or did something or gave them a tool that just clicked and made a difference? And, it, yeah. and how, how was that? 
Oh gosh. There was actually, well, there, there's the first time and then another time. I would say probably the best time mm -hmm. was just watching this woman and it broke her. But it was like just the relief of like, oh, okay, I can be free of this. I don't need to hold on to this anymore. This wow. can be dragged off like a big old ball and chain or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. get rid of it. I don't have to carry this anymore, these bricks or whatever it is. And boy, this need to be released. And th this has been probably since I want to say 2016, maybe 2017, right in there. And she's still now, she's one of my biggest testimonies. Wow. That is oh, amazing. it's so cool just to witness that. Right. And and I don't know if you experienced this. When I started coaching, I had this, what am I doing? Like, what am I helping people with? Like, you know, like I, I really struggled with what the thing was I was going to help them through or if it was really helpful. Because to me, I'm just problem solving like I always do. It doesn't seem out of the norm. And right. so doesn't seem like a big deal. And so when you have that thing where you're like, oh, wait, that actually worked for you? Because I know it works for me, but I don't know if it'll work for you. Yeah. Um, it just, it's very freeing. But did you struggle with getting started on finding your message? Or was it like, I know right away, this is what I'm going to help people with? I started out like health coaching. And that was probably because the eating disorder that I had most of my life. So I thought, well, I know all about this, so I should be able to help with this. But that wasn't like, I, I do work with that um, to a certain extent, but really I just help the hurting. I mean, I don't like, I don't have this particular niche, you know, right. niche, I want to say. Um, it's just people that really want to make a change. It doesn't matter if this is someone that struggled with an eating disorder all their life, or they struggled with um, just feelings of self-worth and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Or if it's some, Oh, a woman that has um, her marriage has ended or her kids have left the nest and she doesn't know what to do next. I do all that. I, yeah. I don't really have a. Yeah. And that's, that, that's one thing where I was at odds because, you know, you watch all the things and like, you have to have a, a niche and yeah. You, have to, yeah. you have to pick it. And the more you specific you are, don't just say I help yeah. you know, people after divorce. It's like, I help 40 year old men after divorce in this area, right? Like they, yeah. they, they say to just do that. And and that's where I was really lost at first. Cause like, I don't feel like I have that thing. And then when I started working with people, it was, it's, so it's very refreshing to me to hear you say that. Cause that's kind of been my approach is mm -hmm. well, basically what aren't you happy with in life and what's getting in the way? Let's approach those two things. And so. I agree with you. And what works for some person, you know, is not meaning that it's going to be for you. You know, you're supposed to, according to the experts, you know, it consistently posts three times a week or whatever. I don't always make it. Yeah. And a lot of times it's radio show clips. I, I just don't make it. I don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. I just figure when I have something that I know needs to be put out there, it'll be there. Right. And if not, it's not people yeah. that I know. I, I just feel like it's set up by God, universe, whatever. Um, for me, it's God that my people are there and they'll come to me when it's supposed to be. And um, I'm just going to do my best with what I've got and just keep serving. Yeah. Well, speaking of people finding you, where is the best places for them to support you? Where it's the best, where are you most active? Where do you want people to give you some love online? Gosh, I am on Instagram, Facebook. Um, I, I love TikTok, but I haven't got it down yet. <laughs> I love <laughs> videos and stuff on there, but, but I'm going to yeah. get that down. All right. Um, I am, um, live every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern transformation talk radio. And my show is transformation with Martin a. come visit me there. If you have a story of overcoming, reach out to me. Um, my email is Martin a at Martin Emmons.com. There's no accents. Um, transformation with Martin a on, um, LinkedIn. You all know on, um, Instagram, just my name on, um, LinkedIn and then Facebook. I have both two pages, business page, Transformation with Martine and then Martine Ammons Perfect. as well. And then I have a website, just me, martineammons.com. You can reach me or find my podcast on there, coaching services, TEDx, we're getting on there. All we're right. It, on there. Um, it is on there. I just need to have more information there. But if you want a TEDx talk, please reach out to me. I'm your girl. 
and you can click. We'll have we have links down in the description here. So if you were driving and didn't capture all that, just save the episode and click it afterwards. You can go right to see Martinet there. Um, Thank you. It's so fun to hear your journey and it's so inspiring. You're one of the people I've met in the last year. And as we've been in, you know, books together and all this stuff, it's like exciting yeah. to see, you know, with the uh, the Win the Wellness War, which is how we got connected with Peggy. Yes. Um, got to definitely mention that. It's it's fun to see there, there are certain people and you're one of these people and Peggy's one of these people where when, when they introduce me to somebody or when somebody's in that tribe, you just know that it's like a no questions asked, you know, we're yeah. going to, we're going to be like-minded and it's going to, it's going to be great. So. Yeah. 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 Now, it's awesome. You've been wonderful to spend time with, you know, um, text with and, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, yeah. is I, 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 when I get to Seattle, which is probably in the next couple of months, we'll have to have lunch yeah. or drink or something. For sure. Let me know when you're here. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's funny because you mentioned how fall is changing and, and, seasons change and, and here we had the first day of fall um and it was interesting how when that happened it just poured down rain it was 80 degrees the day before and then the first day of fall hit and it was windy and rainy and I was actually at an outdoor event that day and it was yes. just, yep it's here <laughs> <laughs> but the great thing is in Washington people still show up and come out you know they got their rain gear on and uh just standing out in the rain getting dumped on going out yeah doing the stuff so right. can't put life on hold when you're getting dumped on apparently no 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 and your area it comes quite a bit and darkness and gloomy sometimes too huh yeah oh yeah definitely a lot of gray we get uh, a lot of people think oh washington has so much rain and uh, there's a, an interesting fact i love to share it's that new york actually gets more inches of rain per year oh, okay western washington has more days of rain so it's just a slow gray drizzle <laughs> oh yeah it's not as much water but yeah so yeah well martin a before we go i've got to know if you've 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 given us so much good stuff so i'm gonna put you, you ask for even more but if you were going to challenge people this week on one way they could own their awkward they could be themselves what would you ask them to do yeah actually just just do that be you mm. there's no one better than you and i know that's like another cliche thing or whatever but Really, you were given specific gifts from God, from the universe that you need to hone in on those because there's something special there for you. And this is another cliche thing. And whatever you love to do really is your gift. Mm -hmm. It is what you're supposed to be doing. Right. So really hone in on that and spend some time writing, um, do a lot of brain dumps. I do that a lot. I show my clients to do that a lot. Just start writing, even if sometimes it's like, yeah, this... Uh, awkward person on Andy Vargo's show said, you know, to write, and I don't know what to write about, but you know, da, da, da. you never know what's going to come out. Yeah, that's true. And there'll be a, there's a good message in there, mm -hmm. you know, that could lead you on a whole different path. And you never know, just like me, just this one, um, you know, one, my master coach asking me to find a TED talk has turned into a whole new business for me. Right. You never know one thing that you might get asked to do or one thing that you decide to try and like, oh, I like this and somebody else wants it and somebody else wants it and you're having fun doing it. You never know what you can find. And Yeah. And it's, it's interesting yeah. how often somebody else, and it has to be someone close to us or someone that really knows us yeah. and has our, our, our back, but someone mm -hmm. else can see something about ourselves that we don't see ourselves. Like he asked you to do that talk. He knew you'd be good at it. He's like, go yeah. for it. And you're like, wow, that became this whole thing that you love doing and are building a business around. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, you heard Martin a say it, just be you. Just, just be you, it. really. Be you. It's so simple, but it's true. Be you. I love it. Martin a, thank you so much for today mm -hmm. and our conversation and for everything. You are a true inspiration in the world and you're doing great things. Thank you for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate you and your friendship and just who knows what else is on the pike, right? Exactly. We're, we're going to ride this out and see where this journey goes together. Absolutely. You got it. And everybody else, be sure you go out there, click on all of Martinet's links, follow her, reach yeah. out to her, do all the stuff. And then, of course, as always, own your awkward. Yes. 
thank you so much for listening in for today's show. Be sure to visit awkwardcareer.com to continue your journey. And of course, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends so they can find their awkward side and learn how to own it.